24-hour news. Basic Heart 2. Around the clock. We'll stay on the scene. At Channel 2 News, it's our job to bring you the news as it happens. It's just in the Channel 2 News. Stories break morning, noon, and night that are important to you. Got it. That's what matters to Channel 2 News. Getting it to you as it happens. 32 air. 24-hour news. Seven days a week. Around the clock. Now it's always time for Channel 2 News, your 24-hour news station. Coming out in 3, 2, 1. Join us for the Arthritis Foundation Telethon. Sunday from 11 to 7 on Channel 2. NBC Sports World shines with the Jeep Superstars Finals. Olympian Roger Kingdom, baseball's Kevin McReynolds, and defending champion Willie Goff. Who will overcome the obstacles and outshine them all? The answer lies in the stars. The Jeep Superstars Finals on NBC Sports World. Next weekend, Jack Nicklaus, Greg Norman, and the PGA's best tee off of the U.S. f and Classic. Then the World Figure Skating Tour of Champions spotlights America's Jill Trenary and the sensational Midori Ito. And it's Ali versus Frazier, the thriller in Manila. Was this the greatest fight ever? The Saturday Sports Showcase on NBC. Monday, Shannon's on a case he can't win. I'm beginning to think everybody's lying to me about what happened. With a client he can't defend. He made a move on me and I greased him. I wouldn't say greased in court. It doesn't convey your deep sense of remorse. So why does everyone want him off the case? Hey, you can't strong on me. Shannon's deal, Monday after Hunter. Join Channel 2 and tee off for the Glenn Levitt Scott Scramble Monday, May 7th. They say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Well, after watching these greats tear up the senior tour, who would disagree? Enjoy a weekend of golf with the men who will forever remain kids at heart. The Liberty Mutual Legends of Golf, Sunday on NBC. With machines that can travel 160 miles per hour, these boys aren't your typical Sunday drivers. The Budweiser U.S. International Motorcycle Grand Prix on NBC. Dick Emberg back at NBC Sports Update. We're through six rounds of the Rumble in the Jungle. You know, the very name Muhammad Ali conjures up greatness, and he's offering some wonderful supportive evidence. Fun to look back to 74, and we'll continue in a moment. But first, let's look ahead at what we have planned for you next weekend on Saturday Sports Showcase. The PGA's best will be competing for a million-dollar purse in the U.S. F&G Classic, being played for only the second time at English Turn, a course designed by Jack Nicklaus and the Golden Bear. And defending champion Tim Simpson will take on that tricky course in a top field live from New Orleans. Then Saturday Sports Showcase leaps into May with a 1990 tour of world figure skating champions. This showcase of the world's best amateurs features world champions Jill Trenary and Victor Petrenko, as well as Midori Ito and American Christopher Bowen. Also other top skaters, a dazzling display of figure skating's finest. Then on May 12th... It'll be a It's the greatest fights ever, too. 1975, Muhammad Ali and Smokin' Joe Fraser in the steamy heat of the Philippines. One of the most brutal fights ever. NBC takes a look at then and now, the hype and the fight. Saturday's best sports action on Saturday's Sports Showcase. Ali and Fraser from 1975. That'll be fun, too. But right now, let's go back to our coverage of Ali and Foreman, 1974, the Rumble in the Jungle. I'm Garrick Utley on NBC Nightly News. More signs that an American hostage will be released in the Middle East tomorrow. Pope John Paul makes a historic trip to a former communist country, Czechoslovakia. We'll see the new stealth fighter, the most expensive fighter in the Air Force. That and the rest of the news on NBC Nightly News. Don't miss the next installment of the greatest fights ever. Muhammad Ali, the undisputed champion. Smoking Joe Frazier, a man on a mission to regain his title. It was their third and most memorable encounter. In three weeks, NBC Sports presents The Gorilla in Manila. Oh, when I get the Gorilla in Manila. Oh, Inspired by true stories, the rescues that really happened. Based on the real-life police unit. People are angels. It's the return of True Blue Sunday. Fifteen years ago, she was brutally murdered. Now her twin sisters disappeared in the same lake. And only Perry Mason can solve the case of the lady in the lake Sunday. Join us for the Arthritis Foundation Telethon. Sunday from 11 to 7 on Channel 2. 
Welcome back to our NBC Sports Update studio. We'll be back with Rumble in the Jungle. Dick Enberg with you. We turn to baseball now. The big story continues to be the Cincinnati Reds. Today, they beat the Atlanta Braves 8-1. to That runs their record to 9-0, and marking the best start in the team's long history. The Reds now are setting their sights on the all-time record for wins at the start of a major league season, which is 13, set by the 82 Braves and matched by the 87 Brewers. Symbolic of the Reds' sizzling start, 25-year-old shortstop Barry Larkin. Today, Larkin went one for four with a walk and a two-run single. His average now stands at 564. Many scouts feel he is baseball's most valuable player. We talked with Barry before today's game. He sees himself as just a hacker. Well, what I try to do is uh, try to hit the ball up the middle. I try to knock the pitcher off the mound. That's what I'm thinking in my mind, so I, I don't pull off the ball. Um, it depends on where the pitch is. If it's outside, I try to hit the right field. If it's inside, I just try to react to it. The thing I'm doing is not trying to do too much, not trying to do things I can't do. How good can you be? I mean, as an outstanding hitter, and you always want to get even better, uh, what is an extreme goal for you? Well, the extreme goal right now is to stay healthy the whole season. Uh, every year, it seems I've had a little bit of something happen. Uh, last year was an all-star break with the elbow. And, uh, you know, hopefully this year, the ultimate goal is to stay healthy. And if you do, is a 350-plus season uh, within your range? Well, I don't know. I don't know if the results will be the same. I, I can't promise that I'll go out and get three or two hits every day. But I can promise I'll go out there hacking. I'm, I'm a hacker, and that's why when people ask me if I'm a batting champion type of batter, I say no, because I'm not a student of batting. But uh, I go out there and I hack, and I've been a little bit lucky and a little bit of good so far. Now, wait a minute. That's, uh, you're being <laughs> modest, calling yourself a hacker. Obviously, you're one of the toughest men in all of baseball to strike out. Uh, you, you've got more of a plan than just going up there looking and swinging. <laughs> well, I, I, go, I like hitting with people on base. Um, I like being put in situational hitting situations so uh when i go up there with something on my mind some some purpose uh then i tend to do a little bit better than go up there to just try to get a base hit to start off an inning now you're a cincinnati uh a kid uh, obviously a fan your family very athletic a brother to play football at notre dame another brother that starred in basketball at xavier as you grew up who was your idol there in cincinnati well I always kept my eye on, on Davey Concepcion. I always said I wanted to play shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds when Davey was ready to give up a position, not, not to push Davey out of a position. And it worked out pretty well. So that goes back to uh, even high school ball. You were saying someday I'm going to replace Concepcion? Yep, that's what I said. And the first day I saw him, he told me I couldn't play shortstop. Well, it's inevitable not to talk about uh, Pete Rose. Obviously, you were at the ballpark and cheered him as well, and then you played for Rose. Uh, what are your feelings about what your former manager is going through right now? Well, you know, it's really a shame the things that have happened. Um, you know, with the investigation last year, I thought it was all over. And then a couple months ago, I hear about this uh, tax evasion thing. It's really too bad that these things are happening to Pete. I think Pete's a great guy. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Uh, you know, he's still an idol of mine, and I have lost no respect for him. I just hope he can get into the Hall of Fame like he deserves to be. And your new skipper, Lou Pinella. How is Pinella's approach to managing like Rose, or how is it not like the man that managed you a couple years ago? Well, Lou Pinella is a hands-on type of manager. He, he won't let anything go by the, the wayside. He'll step into situations and take care of them right there. Uh, if there's any problems, if you deviate from his rules or regulations, he's going to step in and let you know. Uh, he only asks that you go out and play hard for him, and he'll take all the heat from the media. So he, he came in from day one and told us the way it was going to be, and it's been like that ever since. And you can respect a guy like that. Boy, and you got to respect a talent like Barry Larkin, All-American at Michigan, a member of the 84 Olympic team, and off to a sensational start for the Red Hot Reds this year. Let's look at the scoreboard now. The Mets held on. Three in the ninth for Montreal, not enough. Viola, the winner, 5-4. Strawberry, Daryl Strawberry, clubbed a tremendous home run in that one. Take a look at the distance on this one. A two-run shot, his second of the year. He not only clears the fence, clears the bullpen fence. That's on its way to a subway exit. Daryl Strawberry, 5-4, the Mets, a winner today, as Viola has three of the five Met wins. Other scores this afternoon around baseball, the American League. Minnesota continues to pound on California, an 8-0 win at the Met. 
Toronto 5-1 winner against Kansas City. Felix, the hitting star for the Blue Jays. It was Baltimore 2-0, uh, but Detroit rallying to win late as the Tigers break a scoreless streak. Chicago, four in the first, and Cleveland, Sandy Alomar, a two-run home run and a three-run double to lead the Indians, 8-4. to four. Milwaukee continues the shutout binge. That's four shutouts this week for the Brewers. Teddy Aguera spun the Blanco today against Boston. Seattle leads Oakland in Oakland, 6-1, to one, as they go for two in a row over the American League champions. So that's the baseball story for you. Coming up next, a young man in Indianapolis, Indiana. He is the number one pick in the 1990 NFL Draft. Jeff George will talk with him live right after this. Do you think this is the way out of the ghetto? The odds are a million to one against your making it as an athlete. But with an education, you could make it big. The stats show that the more education you've got, the more money you make. Simple as that. The more you know how it really is, the more you see that this isn't the way out of the ghetto. This is. NBC Sports World shines with the Jeep Superstars Finals. Olympian Roger Kingdom, baseball's Kevin McReynolds, and defending champion Willie Goff. Who will overcome the obstacles and outshine them all? The answer lies in the stars. The Jeep Superstars Finals on NBC Sports World. A couple of quick notes. Gary Anderson, the talented halfback, uh, that deal is now consummated. Tampa Bay, a four-year deal to Anderson that completes the trade with the San Diego Chargers. And in uh, racing, uh, the Wood Memorial, $500,000 race for three-year-olds in uh, prelude to the Kentucky Derby, favored uh, Champagne for Ashley. A beaten third to a 7-1 choice, uh, 36 red. 36 red, the winner of the Wood, and the uh, winner of a $15 million contract is Jeff George, quarterback at Illinois as a junior, came into the NFL draft. He will uh, be the number one pick in the draft when that's announced at noon tomorrow here in New York. He joins us from his home in Indianapolis. So, indeed, you are returning home, Jeff. Well, it's, it, it's really a dream come true for me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to play back here in Indianapolis, and I think as a kid growing up, uh, you always dream of playing back home, so uh, I guess I am back home again. Any idols growing up in Indiana? <laughs> well, I, I have two older brothers that were two quarterbacks, and I've always wanted to follow in their foot sh in their uh, shoes. And uh, you know, I, I've always uh, uh, idolized those guys. But I, I think uh, as a kid, you always watch uh, the guys like uh, Dan Fouts, uh, Dan Marino, and John Elway, and uh, you always dream of being uh, just like those guys. And uh, it's great to be in that position. You're compared to Dan Marino, and that's high praise in itself, in that you have a quick release. You don't really come over the top. You're more uh, three-quarters in your style, would you describe it? Well, I, I guess you could say that, but I, I just try to adapt uh, to whatever uh, kind of oncoming rush is coming in. If somebody comes in with their arms straight up, I, I, I'm able to do a, a sidearm throw. So, uh, But you know, I just, uh, I'm able to adapt like that, and uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have that kind of ability. There has been talk of a salary cap by... NFL uh, clubs next year. How much did that influence your choice to come into this draft of uh, your junior season? Well, it played a small role in, in my decision to come out. I, I weighed all the, the negatives and uh, positives of, uh, of coming out and staying in college an extra year. And, uh, and I waited till the last minute. I, I didn't announce till March 20th, and the final day to announce was the 22nd. So I, I gathered all kinds of uh, opinions and information and uh, made sure it was the right thing for Jeff George to come out. And uh, right now, uh, things are uh, looking pretty good for me. Well, indeed, with that wonderful contract. But uh, there's also <laughs> pressure that comes with it. And you read the newspapers and hear what people are saying there in Indianapolis. And not everyone's happy. They feel the Colts gave up too much. And part of that is a hangover from the Eric Dickerson deal. And they have to be upset about Eric's attitude of late. Uh, what, what is your answer to the Colt fans in regard to their uh, their concerns about too much to get Jeff George? Well, I really don't put that out of pressure on myself. Uh, I realize that Chris Hinton and Andre uh, Risen are, uh, are great talents, and uh, you know I, I watched them play a lot last year, and uh, they're going to uh, accomplish uh, many awards uh, wherever they play. But uh, you know I can't really worry about that. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I had nothing to do with the trade, and uh, uh, the Indianapolis Colts have uh, confidence in me, that, and they think that I can play for them. And, uh, knowing that, and uh, I just want to uh, go out there and uh, perform and play the best of my ability, and that's all I can ask for. We have 10 seconds. Uh, are your thoughts that you'll be the starting quarterback before the season ends next year or this coming year? 
Well, I hope I hope I am the starting quarterback, but uh, you know, once again, there are two other quarterbacks uh, here in Indianapolis, and Chris Chandler and Jack Trudeau, and, and they're pretty good ones. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to earn that job. And uh, if if the coaches feel that Jeff George is the one, then I want to be out there playing. Well, thank you, young man. Thank you for being with us live today. Jeff George, the number one pick tomorrow at noon in the draft for the NFL. We'll have extensive coverage of it as we are joined by Charger General Manager Bobby Beathard, NBC football analyst Bill Walsh, and Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. They'll all be with us during the draft tomorrow. Right now, let's go back to the Saturday Sports Showcase. A postscript on the rumble in the jungle. Saturday Sports Showcase is brought to you by Dodge. For exciting cars and trucks, it's Advantage Dodge. By Tenactin, Pure's recurring athlete's foot. Fast-acting Tenactin puts athlete's foot out for good. By Scope, the best thing first thing in the morning. And by Meineke. It's smart to come to Meineke for all your exhaust and brake service needs. Jesse Benavides. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hawaiian punch and stunned the champion to the delight of his hometown crowd. Now he continues his quest for a world title. Jesse Benavides battles Kelvin Seabrooks live Sunday on NBC Sports World. Their epic heroics in the ring are indelibly etched in the annals of time. Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, the raging bull Jake LaMotta, Muhammad Ali, marvelous Marvin Hagler, Mike Tyson. On June 23rd, NBC Sports presents the greatest rounds ever. Only one network has this summer's premier Grand Slam event. And the game's hottest new analysts. Tennis on NBC. The summer's hottest hits. Sunday on NBC. The daughter's dead. That can't be. A formal arrest has been made in connection with last night's brutal slaying. It is the judgment of this court to be allowed parole. You got enough money, you can buy anything you want. If I'd only done something, she might still be alive. I promise you, it's not over. I'd kill him. People like us, Sunday. Paul, Channel 2 News. So we're through 10 rounds of the Ali Frazier epic, and we'll get to round 11 in just a minute. But first, there's plenty more action on the Saturday Sports Showcase in the upcoming weeks. Here's a preview. Next week on Saturday Sports Showcase, baseball returns home to NBC with a Masters Baseball Classic, featuring some of baseball's greatest names from the 70s and 80s. Then, on May 26th, Four of the LPGA's best take to the links in the first J.C. Penny Ladies Skins game. Featuring three-time LPGA championship winner Nancy Lopez, 1990 Nabisco Dinah Shore winner Bessie King, along with Jan Stevenson and Joanne Carner. Then, Saturday Sports Showcase heats up June with red-hot tennis action from the clay courts of Roland Garros. Two straight Saturdays live from the French Open. Featuring American Michael Chang, who took last year's title and the tennis world by storm, becoming the youngest French Open champion ever. And Arancha Sanchez Vicario is back to defend her title. But Grand Slam winner Steffi Graf is also back, seeking her third French Open championship. Saturday's best sports action, only on Saturday Sports Showcase. Well, from the clay courts of Paris, we go to the canvas in Manila. Let's rejoin Marv Albert and Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Jesse Benavides. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Hawaiian punch and stunned the champion to the delight of his hometown crowd. Now he continues his quest for a world title. Jesse Benavides battles Kelvin Seabrooks live Sunday on NBC Sports World. Their epic heroics in the ring are indelibly etched in the annals of time. Jack Dempsey, Joe Lewis, the raging bull Jake LaMotta, Muhammad Ali, marvelous Marvin Hagler, Mike Tyson. On June 23rd, NBC Sports presents the greatest rounds ever. I'm Garrick Utley on NBC Nightly News. President Bush calls on Americans to help East European countries build democracy. In this country, floodwaters are still rising in four states, and we'll see what's happening to the labor movement in the United States. Unions are having a tough time. That and the rest of the news on NBC Nightly News.
Welcome back to our NBC Sports Update studio. I'm Ahmad Rashad. A busy day in the NBA playoffs with three conference semifinals taking place today. And the defending Western champions, the Los Angeles Lakers, are in for a fight with the Phoenix Suns. The team split the two games in Los Angeles. And today in Phoenix, the Suns are beating the Lakers at this moment, 98-86, to 86, late in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, in the other Western Conference semifinal, the San Antonio Spurs are on the verge of evening their best-of-seven series with Portland at two games apiece. Right now, the Spurs are leading 99-76 to 76 as they play in the fourth quarter. In the East, the Detroit Pistons came into New York up two games to none on the Knicks and riding a 12-game playoff winning streak stretching back to last year. But they ran into a buzzsaw today by the name of Patrick Ewing. Ewing did everything today. Here you see him hit a turnaround. He had a playoff, a career playoff high of 45 points. And it wasn't only scoring that Ewing did. He showed here he had some passing ability also as he hit Mari's cheeks there for an easy two. Now here's a key play in the game. With about 30 seconds left and the Pistons down by four, Isaiah Thomas is bothered by Trent Tucker and loses it out of bounds. Chuck Daly sees his team fall 111 to 103. For Nick coach Stu Jackson, a pattern seems to be developing. We have been down 2-0 in each of the series, but uh, in each time, in each instance, we're just trying to take one game at a time, and our objective against Detroit is to hopefully turn this into a shortened uh, three-game series. How do you explain the turnaround? Well, Mike, I think this team, uh, although we're young, uh, and sometimes uh, we don't play as smart as we would like, uh, they're blessed with a lot of pride. Uh, I think uh, everybody's fulfilling their role right now. Uh, we're playing pretty good basketball, especially at the defensive end. One of the things that was very important is that this game, Patrick Ewing stayed out of foul trouble. Uh, yeah, that's big, Ahmad. You know, the Detroit Pistons are blessed uh, with great depth. Uh, they can afford to have one person or two people underneath get in foul trouble. Uh, we have to pitch a perfect game, Ahmad, and uh, for us that means that we have to stay out of trouble uh, with our two big people, uh, particularly, you know, Charles Oakley and Patrick Ewing. Well, Patrick Ewing certainly did stay out of foul trouble, but as importantly, the Knicks hit their free throws. The Knicks hit 34 of 36, while the Pistons hit only 21 of 35. Isaiah Thomas knew that that meant the difference. Despite the intensity of the Knicks, and despite all intensity, uh, the, the key factor in the game came down to free throws, which doesn't require a lot of intensity. And, uh, you know, we didn't do well from the line tonight, and that was a difference in the basketball game. What does the back-to-back -back games do to your strategy? Uh, well, it makes you go to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> Is it tougher with, with no time to rest? Well, it's tougher with Patrick Ewing. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> uh, it's, um... Yeah, it's tougher uh, because you, you don't get as much time as you normally would get to rest and your body doesn't heal quite as fast as it normally does because the playoff situation is so, uh, so intense that you, your body goes through more shock and more changes uh, than it does during the regular season. I asked Isaiah, was he thinking about repeating at this point? And he said, hey, we're only in the second phase of this whole thing. Give us a little bit of time. Now, there was one final in baseball, the New York Mets behind Frank Viola, Shut off the Los Angeles Dodgers 7 to nothing, running his record to 7 and 0. Viola is the first 7 game winner in the majors. The Dodgers meanwhile have lost 6 in a row. Earlier today on NBC Sports, we brought you to the 12th stage of the Tour de Trump where Raul Alcala moved into the lead. The Mexican has a 43 second advantage going into tomorrow's final stage, which will be seen here on NBC at 4 p.m. Well, that is all for us here at NBC. Uh, I hope we, we hope you enjoyed the Ali Frazier. I know I did. It's one of those fights that, you know, you remember exactly where you were when that fight went on. I was about three years old, maybe 12. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow starting at 1.30 with Ringside. So long, everybody. Showcase has been brought to you by Scope, the best thing first thing in the morning.
by John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. By the Century 21 system, the largest real estate sales organization in the world. And by Domino's Pizza, hot, fresh, delicious pan pizza. Domino's Pan Pizza, nobody delivers better. We hope you've enjoyed Channel 2's Saturday movie, Take Her, She's Mine, starring James Stewart and Sandra Dee. worry about taking care of our bodies. But with all the medical information out there, how do you begin to sort through it? Health Matters reporter Lori Lasowski can help. More than ever before, Americans are concerned about their physical well-being. Through our health reports, you can keep in touch with important medical advances that will help you live a healthier lifestyle. Because your health matters to Channel 2 News. Part of our commitment. To news that matters to you in the 1990s. to the circus with Channel 2 at Kids Face, Saturday, June 30th. This is the NBC Television Network. She thought being the divorced mother of three was tough until... I'll be the mother of six. Barbara Eaton in Brand New Life. And she's a cat burglar on the prowl. You're almost cute. He's a paper shuffler hitting the streets. Yeah. Together, they're a mismatch caught in a wild crime caper. She knows too much. It's the Sunday double feature on NBC. Examine your eating habits on the health and nutrition test tonight at 8 on Channel 2. Alcatraz, a somber mass of sandstone and concrete. They said no man could escape. Now the world's most fearless athletes brave the treacherous shark-infested waters of San Francisco Bay. And that's just the start. The Dodge Escape from Alcatraz, the world's most dangerous triathlon. Next weekend, the world's great champions begin their quest for the most coveted crown in tennis, Wimbledon. Then, Greg Norman, Payne Stewart, Curtis Strange, and more tee off at the Anheuser-Busch Golf Classic. And one week later, the best golfers from the worlds of sport and entertainment take to the greens for the Celebrity Golf Championship, the Saturday Sports Showcase on NBC. The greatest fights ever can now be yours on home video cassette. Cassius Clay versus Sonny Liston. An improbable upset that turned the boxing world on end. Up the world. Up the world. Rumble in the jungle. Muhammad Ali and Big George Foreman. Two determined gladiators toe-to-toe -to -toe in the sweltering jungle of Zaire. Sold like a butterfly, sing like a the Thrilla in Manila, Muhammad Ali and Spoken Joe Frazier, their third and most memorable encounter. And NBC's compelling look at boxing's 15 greatest rounds ever. Don't miss out on this great first-time offer. To order, call 1-800-843-8350. $24.95 each, or all four for just $79.95. This offer is not available in stores. Call now. This is Bob Costas here at NBC Sports Update in New York. Just a reminder that a little under an hour from now, we'll talk live with Denver Nuggets coach Doug Moe and Oakland A's slugger Jose Canseco, activated off the disabled list just today. We'll also have all the latest baseball scores and other sports news. But right now, let's return to Marv Albert and Ferdy Pacheco for the greatest rounds ever. Wimbledon, for over 100 years, the most important tennis championship in the world. And this year, as the game's best compete, NBC will be there bringing you over 35 hours of action, our most comprehensive schedule ever. Daily coverage of the championships, Wimbledon, begins next Saturday on NBC. Starting Monday, leap into Quantum Leap Week. Quantum Leap Week? It's five great nights of quantum action. Quantum Leap Week. Quantum Adventure. Quantum Leap. Quantum <laughs> Romance. Quantum Leap Week. And Quantum Craziness. <laughs> I can't say this. No matter how you say it, it's five great nights. Quantum Leap Week. Take the leap starting Monday at 10, 9 Central. Want to feel like a kid again? A big one. Then follow the leader to Family Fun this week on Family Feud. Name a place where kids tire out their parents. 
pie. Comedy and questions make good, clean fun. Plain old dirt, mud pie. When host Ray Combs comes out to play. Let me see, Dumbo. An elephant never forgets, and neither should you. Show me a saggy body. To watch Family Feud. All this week on The Family Feud, weeknights at 7 on Channel 2. Run away to the circus with Channel 2 at Kids Face, Saturday, June 30th. Alcatraz, a somber mass of sandstone and concrete. They said no man could escape. Now the world's most fearless athletes brave the treacherous shark-infested waters of San Francisco Bay. And that's just the start. The Dodge Escape from Alcatraz, the world's most dangerous triathlon. Each summer, the world's great champions gather for the most important tennis event of the year. <laughs> Jewel of Tennis. Coverage begins Sunday. Next weekend, the world's great champions begin their quest for the most coveted crown in tennis. Wimbledon. Then, Greg Norman, Payne Stewart, Curtis Strange, and more tee off at the Anheuser-Busch Golf Classic. And one week later, the best golfers from the worlds of sport and entertainment take to the greens for the Celebrity Golf Championship. The Saturday Sports Showcase on NBC. The greatest fights ever can now be yours on home video cassette. Playlisted, the improbable upset. Ali Foreman, the rumble in the jungle. Ali Frazier, the thriller in Manila. And NBC's compelling 15 greatest rounds ever. To order, call 1-800-843-8350. $24.95 each or all four for just $79.95. This offer is not available in stores. Call now. Welcome back to NBC Sports Update. One of the big stories this weekend involved Georgetown coach John Thompson's decision to turn down a lucrative offer to become the general manager of the Denver Nuggets. So only four days before the draft, the Nuggets find themselves without a GM. It's believed the Nuggets have spoken with Billy McKinney, John Nash, and Doug Collins, but in each case either backed off or were turned down. But that hasn't stopped the Nuggets from making deals. Thursday, they sent all-star guard Fat Lever to Dallas in exchange for a first-round pick this year and next. And then yesterday, they sent both of their number ones this year, the ninth and 15th overall, to Miami for the Heat's first-rounder this year, which is the third overall pick. The Nuggets coach Doug Moe joins us now from his home outside Denver. First of all, with Thompson backing off, does this make you breathe a little easier? Because a lot of people thought one of his first moves would be to make a coaching change. What do you mean, breathe easier? <laughs> no, not really. I, uh, I've known John for a long time, and besides, if John had gotten a job, I was going to call Smitty, tell him to call John, and tell him to fire me, and then I'd go relax. Do you expect to coach the Nuggets next year? I know you've had kind of an ambivalent attitude hey, about it the last hey, year Hey, Bobby, so. let me tell you something. This is the truth. I'm here. I do the job. Do, do whatever I can do. I have no control over whether they fire me or not, and if they do, let me put it to you like this. Here today, gone to Maui. <laughs> Who's gone to Maui? Very nice. Who's making <laughs> Very these good, right, Bobby? Who's yeah. making these deals now? Because technically there's no GM, but the club is maneuvering like crazy. Well, the Tooth Fairy, who the heck do you think's making them? Are you making them? It's, uh, <laughs> it, well, actually, it's uh, myself, Carl Shear, Peter Bino, and uh, the three of us have been working together, and it's, uh, you know, we have a direction. We know what we're doing. It's, uh, we're getting things done, and uh, we think the deals are pretty good. So uh, the best thing is just go out, do your job, enjoy yourself, and don't worry about anything. And uh, it, it's kind of, let me tell you something. To be perfectly honest, it's been kind of fun for me. You're putting that in the past tense when you say it's been kind of fun. Are you gearing yeah, yourself if they tell up me, for the... If I'm, no, if they tell me I'm staying here and they won't get rid of me with all the rumors going around, if they tell me I'm staying here, it'll take the, take the excitement and the fun out of it. I, we, got, we got about you know, what I told our owner yesterday. I said, what's the worst that can happen? I said, you fire me and you pay me off. What am I, you think I'm going to go home crying? Give yeah. me a break, will you, Bob? Okay, <laughs> folks, Doug Moe, in character as always, taking it as it comes. His team has the third pick upcoming in the draft. We'll have more draft coverage tomorrow when we're joined by possible number one pick Derek Coleman of Syracuse and Golden State Warrior coach and general manager Don Nelson. In soccer, Cameroon became the first African nation to ever reach the World Cup 
Cup quarterfinals when they beat Colombia 2-1. Colombia was eliminated from the tournament. In today's other World Cup game, Czechoslovakia easily advanced to the quarterfinals with a 4-1 win over Costa Rica. The Czechs now await the winner of tomorrow's game between West Germany and the Netherlands. Reports out of Oakland this weekend say that the A's and Jose Canseco have reached agreement on a money figure and all other major aspects of a new multi-year contract. Only minor details remain to be worked out over the next several days. It's believed the A's, despite the risks associated with Canseco's chronic back problems, are set to shell out something in the vicinity of $4 million per year for Jose's services. I spoke with Canseco prior to the A's game with the White Sox in Oakland, and when he wouldn't confirm a specific figure, I put it to him this way. Would he even consider signing a new contract that did not make him baseball's highest paid player? I think in this game, uh, you're, you're paid on performance, of course, as an individual, of course, as, as, as a team performer. And uh, what they do each year is uh, calculate your at-bats, whatever home runs and RBIs, and definitely on the mark today uh, for the $4 million players, uh, my stats have far and achieved theirs, and basically what happens there is you get paid more. How many years, Jose? It's going to be a five-year deal. And will it have an ironclad no-trade clause, or would it be possible for the A's to trade you during the course that, of that contract? Uh, as soon as I sign that, all the details will be talked about. What about the condition of your back? Today is the first day off the disabled list. You're going to DH. How do you feel? Uh, the back feels pretty good. I'm going to DH today. Uh, like I said before, it may take me a couple of games, eight to ten at-bats to really get my timing back and to really get into the swing of things. So, you know, I'm, I'm just looking forward to get out there and start playing. And uh, hopefully we can put the White Sox eight, eight to ten games behind us. Even after missing two weeks, you're still second in the league to Cecil Fielder in homers. You've got 20. You've already driven in 50 runs. You're batting 325. You've got a crack at the Triple Crown. Is that something you think about? <laughs> uh, you think about it. Like I said, here, here in Oakland is going to be impossible. I'm hoping Wade Ball gets traded to another plan or Kirby Puckett, those type players. But uh, hopefully if I maintain consistent. I mean, there, there is an outside shot. It's, uh, it's not impossible. It's, it's not probable. But, I mean, with my ability, I don't even put limitations. Who knows? I may be able to do it. What are your thoughts now about your public image? Not because of incidents that happened a year ago, but because of comments during the past several months. In your mind, you may just be being blunt and honest, but I'm sure you're aware that to a large segment of the public, your assessments of your own ability doesn't play well. That doesn't strike them as a, a modest stance. Definitely every player cares about their public image, but not to the extent where uh, the player will be run by the public. Uh, the player will be disturbed uh, by the public to, to the point where he won't be able to, to come out here and perform. What would you do differently in the future? Uh, you mentioned blunt. It's not blunt. Uh, I'm a very truthful player. I don't, I don't fool around. I'm definitely not a politician who's going to let you hear what you want to hear or, or lie to you. That's just not my character. You want to hear the truth, you come to me, I'll tell you flat out what I think and, and how things are. All right, then let me ask you this flat out. Are you the best player in baseball? I don't know. Jose sidestepping that one. He's 0 for 2. He struck out twice and be, been hit by a pitch as the DH today in Oakland against the White Sox, Jack McDowell. There's a bit of a beanball war going on. Canseco has been hit. So has Mark McGuire. Then Mike Moore of the A's threw at Ozzie Gee and the White Sox shortstop. Both managers were warned. Moments ago, McGuire homered in the bottom of the fifth to tie it. 3-3, the White Sox and the A's. At Fenway Park, Baltimore was an out from victory. They were up 3-2 in the bottom half of the tenth. Red Sox had a man at second. Two down in the last half of the 10th inning when Greg Olson delivered to Dwight Evans and Evans took him over the green monster for Dewey's second homer of the day, his seventh of the year. The Red Sox win it in dramatic fashion, four to three. In a year and a half in the majors, Olson has allowed two homers. Both of them have been hit by Dwight Evans. The Yankees beat Toronto in 15 last night. Today at the Sky Dome, the Blue Jays prevail eight to four. Todd Stottlemyre wins his eighth. Tim Leary, the loser, is now three and 10. The Cardinals led 8-2 in the fifth inning at Wrigley Field. The Cubs rallied, but they fall short 8-7, despite a four-hit day by Ryan Sandberg. A single, two doubles, and this, his National League leading 20th home run, a three-run shot. That was offset by Jose Oquendo's three RBIs, and Terry Pendleton knocked in four for the Cardinals, who win it today at Wrigley, 8-7. One other game in the National League at the Astrodome. The Astros over the Giants. Four to two. So you're updated on all the important sport news, sports news to the moment. Time for us to get out of here. We'll see you tomorrow. Go into the chapel. This wedding's going to go off without a hitch. <laughs> go and get married. How are we going to get married?
always loved you all sweaty. The wedding is off. Well, how can I help? Isn't this exciting? The year's craziest wedding. Going to the chapel Monday at 8, 7 central. Good evening. Coming up next on Channel 2 News Weekend, once friends but now political enemies. We'll tell you about a battle over abortion and the governorship. Major fire damage at an area school overnight. Officials suspect arson. Plus kids and their mutts. We'll show you some of the cutest playmates around. I'm Wanda Stark. Those stories plus a rainy forecast and the best bass fishermen in town. The news is next. Hey kids, ever feel like roaring like a lion? Ah! Laugh like a monkey. <laughs> Act as silly as a clown. The center stage is yours under the kids' face Big Top. It's a magical circus world at LaSalle Park, filled with fun and games plus entertainment where you become the performers. Run away to the circus with New York Telephone, WJYE, WECK, and Channel 2 at Kids Space, June 30th. We'll see your family at Kids Space. Abby, you lose weight. You're going to find a man in your dreams. When I first lost my weight, I did over a thousand sit-ups today. On the next Sally Jesse Raphael, they lost over a hundred pounds. The only thing that changed for me is my dress size. I had more friends when I was heavier. Size. You have to get yourself away from the negative people. I mean, you should, you've got to be happy with yourself. Can weight loss add happiness to your life? On the next Sally. Sally Jesse Raphael, Monday morning at 10 on Channel 2. This is WGRZ TV2, Buffalo, New York. Now. From Western New York's fastest growing news station, Channel 2 News. With Wanda Stark, Carol Kaplan Weather, and Wes Goforth Sports. This is the Weekend Report. Good evening. Former allies are now foes in the governor's race with the Republican and Right to Life parties sniping at each other. The man making the most noise in this growing battle was in Buffalo today. Steve Brown has the story. Are you, are you Republican? Yeah. Come on in, come on here. Lewis Wien of Staten Island is in pursuit of registered Republicans. Wien, already in the governor's race as the Right to Life candidate, now also wants the GOP backing. He's mounting a petition drive for a September primary face-off against the favorite of the party leadership, Pierre Rinfray. He lies to the public. He told everybody that he was a Republican. He's not a Republican, never has been a Republican, can't even vote for himself in the primary. And Rinfray is pro-choice on the abortion issue. That angers many pro-life backers who've thrown their support to the Republican Party in recent elections. So Weed is on the attack, saying things that anger the GOP leadership. And uh, before I'd have a Rinfray, I'd have a Cuomo. And there are defectors to Ween's camp by Republicans. The chair of the Niagara Falls GOP jumped to the Ween campaign, and he says he's not alone. Oh, no, absolutely not. I get calls from uh, all over the state, from uh, people that are business people, working people, blue collar, white collar, uh, clergy, whatever. Republicans. Uh, Republicans. And Wien's challenge is getting the attention of GOP loyalists. State Senator Dale Volker saying if Wien were able to win, it would create a huge problem, havoc for the Republican Party. And havoc is exactly what Wien is counting on. He says the more attention, the more press coverage he gets in his contested battle for the GOP nomination, the better his chances are to defeat Renfrey and Cuomo. Steve Brown, Channel 2 News, Buffalo. And the Republicans are on a little offensive of their own against Wayne. A friend of the state GOP is challenging Wayne's paperwork to be on the ballot for governor. In our Channel 2 News Crime Watch, a 24-year-old Buffalo man is dead, the victim of a gunshot wound. Police say it started with an argument at a bar along East Ferry Street. Byron Barnes was reportedly shot in the head. He died late this afternoon. Police say they have several leads on a suspect. And it looks like charges against a store clerk will be dropped in the case involving the traffic deaths of four teenagers in Cheektowaga last winter. They were killed on an icy Genesee street when their car collided with a truck. A store clerk who sold beer to one of the youths has been charged with a misdemeanor. The driver was legally drunk, but lawmen are now asking that charges be dropped. Kenmore fire officials suspect arson as the cause of an overnight fire at Lindbergh Elementary School. It started as a burglary call, but when firefighters got there, they found a faculty room engulfed in flames. Fire crews from surrounding towns had to be called in to help. Damage to Lindbergh Elementary is estimated at $100,000. 
the men and women who fight fires in the village of Lancaster say they're feeling a lot of heat these days from the mayor there. At issue, a controversial proposal to get rid of the village police department. Channel 2's Cheryl Doherty tells us what the two groups mean to each other and what the accusations are all about. I myself, as well as members of the department, have been told to remove orange ribbons from the, our houses and cars. Orange ribbons symbolizing their opposition to Mayor Arthur Pozluzny's proposal to disband the Lancaster Village Police Department. The town of Lancaster Police Department would take over, employing at least nine of the village's 15 officers. Village residents have voiced strong opposition to the proposal. The mayor and a majority of village trustees claim the move would save money and still provide at least the same level of services. Now, Fire Chief Daniel Fliss contends the mayor is threatening individual members of the village's volunteer fire department with repercussions for supporting the officers, but he would not elaborate. There's been conversations held at previous times, and the certain um, statements have been made.